And we are back. It is Friday, and that means one thing. Scott Braddock is on line one. Good morning, Scott, from the Quorum Report. Good morning, Dave. Hey. Sounds like it's going to be freezing there. It's Hey, you know, it, it gets a little cold up here in this part of <laughs> Texas. Yeah, man, you're part of the world. Uh, uh, I, I told Chad Hasty the other day, I'll come see you all, just maybe not when it's snow and ice. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, we don't get a lot of snow, nah, be tr- to be truthful. But you're down there in God's country, in the hill country, aren't you? Uh, today I'm in uh, San Antonio, Texas, in uh, Bear County, 44 degrees and light rain. This morning, later today here, uh, there's going to be uh, an event uh, put on by the Bear County Republican Party uh, where the chairman uh, candidates uh, for the Republican Party of Texas are going to be debating. You know, Alan West, the former congressman from Florida, and the current chairman, James Dickey, uh, will be going at it about the issues, and I would suspect... Yet the main thing that uh, Republican activists will want to hear about is what is the plan to keep Texas Republican heading into this year that we keep hearing about is going to be uh, potentially a good one for Democrats. Well, and and that makes me ask, what uh, do they have? Um, do they have a point? Is it? Uh, well, mm-hmm. uh, are they? Are we in danger of losing the? Uh, uh, is in Texas go blue? Well, you know, you have a robust debate about that, right? Uh, The president's campaign says that, no, Texas is not in play for the Democrats. Uh, He was at that rally uh, in Dallas a few weeks ago now where he was saying that, uh, don't worry about it, we're rock-solid Republican in Texas. I think for his race, that's probably right. Uh, But you can tell that his campaign is working on some things to try to improve the number uh, that President Trump gets in Texas. Uh, you know, in 2016, he beat Hillary Clinton by nine points, which historically for a Republican in Texas, that's actually kind of a weak number. Uh, you know, it's a, you would expect to see Republicans beat Democrats in Texas uh, by double digits instead of just nine points. But here's something that we uh, reported uh, in the last uh, 48 hours at QuorumReport.com. Uh, the Republican House members of the Texas House are being encouraged to sign up for this new project that the Republican Party of the state is doing uh, in conjunction with Karl Rove, you know, the uh, the old school uh, veteran law uh, uh, strategist, um, and they're calling it this voter engagement project. And here's something that's interesting is they say that for the first time, they're able to micro-target, to go after these uh, folks who they think would probably vote Republican but haven't signed up to uh, vote just yet, or they're not registered. Uh, and they peg that number at 1.5 million in Texas. They think that many people uh, are probably those who would likely vote Republican but have not gotten involved enough to uh, be registered yet. So they're going to go try to find those people. They're, they're hunting for new voters. And I can tell you, in all the time that I have been covering politics in this state, it's been a few years now, I have never seen Republicans actively and and spending real money, by the way, uh, the budget for this project, just $3 million. I've never seen an effort like that to try to sign up and register new Republican voters. It's always been the Democrats who have been looking for new voters. And of course, uh, you know, in recent decades, they have not been successful with that. Uh, but this tells me the Republican Party has taken it very seriously, the idea that uh, at least the majority in the Texas House uh, is probably in play. The Democrats would only need to pick up nine seats, as we've talked about here on KFYO. They only need to get nine more uh, to elect the next Speaker of the House, which, of course, would change the dynamics at your Capitol uh, in a big way. Well, and I think the big thing is, uh, again, looking at Kentucky, the biggest thing that they're scared of is the uh, uh, the suburbs. The suburbs and, I mean, the Trump effect, right? I mean, those things go together, right? You have uh, certain voters who uh, may have been Republican voters previously. Some of them are turned off by some of the things that the president does. I think, Dave, you've said it before that, you know, Senator Cruz is is kind of right when he says that you, you do have a lot of voters who like the results that we're getting under President Trump. But somebody, uh, but, but you know, somebody could take away his phone and take that Twitter feed away from him. That would be a good thing. Uh, and so, yeah, there's some people who are turned off and might, uh, you know, be open to voting for Democrats. I mean, keep in mind that when Beto O'Rourke was, you know, before he flamed out on the presidential trail, uh, at least for one week ago, fire, fire the cannon shot and remember the fallen. He uh, he dropped uh, he dropped out of the race one week ago uh, before he took that leftward swing. Uh, in the race for the presidency, you know, when it was more of a moderate uh, sort of candidate, Beto was, or at least it could be described that way. Uh, there were 500,000, a half million Texans who cast their ballots for Beto O'Rourke and for Governor Abbott and for other Republicans in 2018. Yeah. So there's a lot of people out there who 
Um, yeah. you know, if they're not seeing what they want to see from but, Republicans, you know, they might you know, go, go looking for something else. Uh, Scott, we were reading a Victor Hansen uh, op-ed this morning, and he says the number of uh, well, actually, it was it was regarding why there, there's such a, so many people are enamored with socialism, mm-hmm. and he says the number of foreign-born U.S. residents and their children has been estimated at almost 60 million. That's about one in five U.S. residents. So it's inter- mm-hmm. that that that's, that relates to uh, to us here in Texas and what we're talking about. It's interesting. There are those who come from other countries where they may have, um, you know, more socialist style governments where, uh, you know, some of these immigrants are the exact opposite, though, that they they left those places specifically because they didn't want to live under those uh, sorts of forms of government. Uh, And, you know, one of the things that's interesting is if you look at the polling results uh, coming out of the 2018 election, um, it's not just a given uh, that people who uh, are from other places tend to be the ones that vote uh, Democratic. In fact, uh, and this is you know for folks who are moving from other states and not not, not other countries necessarily, uh, but those non-native-born Texans uh, were the ones who were uh, voting more Republican, uh, and those who were born in Texas were the ones who were voting uh, more Democratic. Uh, and you know, one of the things about uh, Texas, one interesting, because one of the things about Texas is that, uh, for example, those people who are moving from California, uh, you know, you might assume they're more liberal or more Democrat, but not all of them. I mean, you, in California, there are more Republicans than there are in Texas. There's just way more Democrats in California than there are hey. uh, here. So, so so, a lot of them see it as a Republican conservative mecca to kind of come to Texas. Now, now, Scott, something that actually made my jaw drop, and uh, I yeah. kind of understand why he's doing it, but it, it really did. I was like, where did that, that kind of came out of left field was Governor mm-hmm. Abbott opened up, what is it, five acres of land for mm-hmm. the homeless people. Uh, and uh, I don't think yeah. the Democrat, I mean, I saw a lot of Democrat responses, especially from like uh, the Austin City Council and uh, some of the, the Austonians, I guess you could say. Is it Austinites? Mm-hmm. Austonians? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, they're, they don't know what to say about this. <laughs> I mean, they literally, they're like, this might actually work. This, I don't know what to do about this. So well, what, what are it, your thoughts on this? It, this has been a very interesting thing. As somebody who lives in Austin to watch all this unfold, you know, you had the city council earlier this year pass a thing that says basically people can camp anywhere that they want. Um, and so it, it's not that we have more homeless people than we did before. It's just that they are visible. They're everywhere. They're downtown. They're under over, overpasses. uh and uh, just camping wherever, and you know, in some parks, just camping wherever they would like. The police department says that the new ordinance is confusing because people don't really know where they are allowed to uh, to camp out uh, during the day and during the evening. Um, and this has really gotten a lot of people fired up, a lot of people angry. Even the president of the United States tweeted about it. Remember, he said, you know, maybe we would step in, you know, from the federal level. And Governor Abbott uh, has also been, you know, uh, someone very critical of the mayor and the way that he's handled this. No, and, and uh, to be to be honest, Scott, you've been pretty critical of this uh, new new thing as well. Yeah, I haven't been. I have not been thrilled with it. But you know, as I think through it, um, the fact that this happened this way uh, is now actually spurring some uh, things to happen that might actually make a difference. So uh, you have the governor saying that yeah, he'll open up some land for people to go uh, camp on. Uh, it's a part of town that's a little bit out of the way, but um, it's uh, you know at least some place that these folks can go. Well, and uh, they're going to the bring thing, they're going to bring food and have uh, porta potties and stuff for. The, I mean, it's not like he's just throwing land out. Out there saying have fun. I mean, it sounds like he's going all out there, over there. Right, but that didn't happen without uh, other people challenging the governor because he had right. said that he didn't like what the uh, what the city was doing. But then people said, "Well, what's your plan?" Right? You know, people said, "Well, what do you want to do instead?" And as the governor was saying that, we also saw this come across uh, the desk yesterday here uh, that uh, there's a new group uh, led by uh, business leaders that have uh, pledged to raise fourteen million dollars to get a new homeless shelter going in Austin. And, of course, this would be, uh, you know, private entities and faith-based groups as well uh, teaming up with business. So so, so here you have the city do this thing. For this, I was going. I'm getting in trouble <laughs> yeah. for this, Scott. But y'all've got homeless yeah. shelters out the wazoo there. I lived in Austin, and I know y'all've got homeless shelters. The problem is not. Uh, I mean, this time of year, there's there's not going to be enough room to keep people from freezing to death. But uh, you know, during the summer, they don't really. I mean, they might go there to get food, but a lot of people don't want to live inside. Well, well, here's the deal with that, and uh, you may get in trouble for saying it, but I'll help you out. So the the, <laughs> the deal with it is that, uh, for example, we have one uh, homeless shelter downtown 
Uh, and because of because of a, a variety of reasons, um, there's uh, a lot of uh, sort of uh, you know criminal activity happening around there. The people who are showing up are not necessarily the homeless, uh, but people who are trying to take advantage of certain folks and uh, a lot of drug dealing going on and that sort of thing. There needs to be a concerted effort to come up with a better plan, a better system than what we have. But it, but again, I do think it's interesting that the city council did this thing that got everybody angry, letting people uh, sort of camp out everywhere, and then you know sort of the good effect of that is that here comes the governor with a plan. Here comes the business community with a plan. Like, we really need to address this, and maybe we don't end up uh, in the same kind of situation as Los Angeles or San Francisco, where they have had these uh, issues for, for years and doesn't seem to be any solution in sight. Now, I, I am going to ask you one more thing about the governor. Mm -hmm. uh, watching what he's done with this, I mean, does this kind of show maybe why he's able to pull some of those moderates over? Because I don't think a, a very conservative governor but would have been willing to do this it's interesting um i think one thing that happens when there's a an issue that's actually in your community uh, you know it's sort of that not in my backyard sort of thing it's it's you know it's that the guy actually lives in austin one thing that happens with local issues it, it's sort of the ideological stuff goes out the window in a lot of ways, because you just want to fix the problem, whatever it is. So, so it's not any more about, you know, what's conservative or what's liberal. And it's just about what is going to work. Uh, and uh, hopefully this will work, because I, I live in Austin also, and I'd like to see a solution to this. Uh, but, but yeah, it's, um, I even saw on the local news here, uh, Matt, uh, where uh, some, you know, hardcore Democrats, and believe me, we've got plenty of them in Austin uh, in Travis County, some of them had said, you know, I kind of tend to agree with the governor on this when, uh, you know, on most issues, I don't. So, Scott, what do you have going on on quorumreport.com? Well, we'll be tracking what's happening with this uh, debate later today. I'm interested to see what the direction of the Republican Party is going to be uh, heading into uh, 2020, you know, what the activists within the party want to see and what the leadership wants to see uh, up against this threat of a Democratic uh, takeover of the Texas House. We'll track it all for you and everything else happening with your state government at quorumreport.com. You can sign up for our free email alerts there at quorumreport.com. All right. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, y'all. Have a great week. All right. You too.